Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Anne and this is The Health Hub. If it's your first time, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. So today, we'll be giving you low coming tips 101. So low coming 101, right? Low coming is a term that is used when one temporarily stands in for one, um, for another person at, a, at their professional place or professional workplace. So this term applies to literally any profession. It could be pharmacy, it could be in, you know, at the physio's office for someone who has their physio practice. Um, who wants to maybe go on a holiday and then they will have you know um, someone else who is of equal like competence um, and in terms of the level of experience in terms of the level of education so basically locoming in terms of doctors and you know our profession most of the people who offer our locums or most of the locums that will be available and advertised are GP locums so you can locum um, for a doctor or a G general practitioner doctor or you can also assist in theatre, um, a surgeon or you know, a gynae, of and gynae doctor, you can assist you know, an ortho doctor um, during their operations in theatre. So that's also another form of a locum. So it can either be a medical type locum or a surgical locum, you know. Um, and the other form of a locum that is available for doctors is casualty. So casualty locums are also available. So we mentioned um, so basically, we mentioned the GP, GP locum, we mentioned surgical or theatre locum, theatre assistant locum, I mean, then we mentioned casualty officer or just casualty locum. And then the fourth type of locum that there is, is basically locum in to do a ward round in private. That is normally for a doctor, um, maybe a GP who has admitted a couple of patients um, or who has admitted a couple of patients in the ward. Um, or a specialist doctor who has admitted a couple of patients in the ward and therefore is not available because they are on leave and therefore needs someone to actually be around to do the ward round for them or see the patients for them. So those are literally, um, those are the four types of locums that, that there are. Before I go into, into the different types of locums and the requirements and the things that are actually done um, and the rates, etc., I want to first, I guess, reiterate you know the important things that one has to take into consideration so basically the important things to take note of when taking up a locum is who are you doing a locum for you cannot do a locum for a specialist when you are not a specialist you know if you are a medical officer for example in a public hospital um and you know you have free time you know to do a specific locum for a specific doctor you have to make sure that it is the qualification match you know because it is illegal for you to do a locum for a specialist whereas you are not a specialist yourself so in terms of the level of competency and the level of i don't know specialization it has to match and it has to be equal because technically you are cheating your patients if you're going to be asking someone who is not of equal competence or level to come do a locum at your office whereas you are a specialist so if you are an obs and gynae specialist, you cannot ask an obs and gynae medical officer to come and help out in your offices. That is wrong. That is illegal. And as the medical officer, you cannot take up such jobs. You know, I know some people push the boundaries and will do like illegal things, but that's not allowed. The other thing to take note of is that when you're actually doing a locum, um, you are sort of like representing that doctor in a way. So in the way that you conduct yourself, the way that you dress is also important. The way that you carry yourself, the way that you treat the patients at that specific, you know, practice, it is very, very important that you do your best, like be your utmost best, be best dressed, be well behaved, be you know, be well-mannered. I know <laughs> we shouldn't be telling grown adults this, but you're standing in for someone and you don't want to drop the bar. You don't want patients to be like, oh, you know, you know, because patients already are skeptical when they particularly going to see their specific doctor and they get there and that specific doctor is not around. They already have, you know, hesitations. But, you know, you don't want to give them another reason in order for them to have even further more hesitations regarding the way that you conduct yourself or the way that you appear to them. Yeah, well, so that's also something to take note of that you are representing this person. You have to treat the environment and the whole business, you know, with respect, you know, because you're standing in for someone and it's their hard and, you know, money and, you know, effort and work that was put into building that whole practice. So the other thing to take note of is basically legal issues. And the legal issues are, you cannot do a locum if you are an intern. <laughs> you cannot. I know students who do locums. Guys, guys, guys. Imagine having to put your whole, you know, career at risk before it even begins. 
like you cannot be a medical student and be doing low carbs don't i don't don't risk it like i know the money is good i know you probably just want to make quick cash but don't do it don't be a um a student and be doing locums and people will be doing such favors for their friends um because they were in the same medical school we stayed at the same res can i just come home in for you don't 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 as a student no you cannot you are not of equal competency you don't even have a license to practice you're not even an independent protectioner so you cannot stand in you cannot do a locum as a student you also cannot do a locum as an intern because you are not you are not fully, how do I put it, qualified. That's why I, during internship, we are made to go through the various rotations in the various departments so that we learn a thing or two about everything and just therefore, you know, our general, you know, practitioners by the time that we are, we, we've finished during, with our internship. So you cannot, you cannot, absolutely cannot be doing locums during your internship. From the level of ComServe, you actually can do locums, right? But um, your locums, you have to do them at your free time, not between that eight to four time o'clock or time slot of work. Um, but during your free time, some people will do low comes when they are post call because technically they are done with work. So you cannot do, um, you cannot use your normal working hours. You can't steal from the government basically and go do a low come during the hours that you are meant to, to actually, to actually be at work. Okay. So that's another thing to take note of, right? And then the other thing that is of importance that you should take note of, which I learned <laughs> after doing the dispensing course, which I actually personally did not know, was that, you know, there's different types of GPs. So some GPs will write a prescription for you to go fetch it like a pharmacy, like clicks, just came wherever, you know? they'll write a script for you, right? And some GPs will actually dispense from their actual offices. And for a GP to actually dispense or have pills, a pill cabinet, in their office or you know be able to give medication to a patient from their practice they actually need a dispensing license right and obviously for a dispensing license they need to have done the course after the course after the course um, and have applied to get license so what I actually learned is that if you are actually low coming for a GP that has a dispensing license or a GP that is dispensing from their offices you have to yourself have a dispensing license because should inspectors arrive and rock up and say, hala hala, who are you? You have to be able to actually whip out your license and say, hey, I am this person. Um, I'm doing this at, you know, I'm locoming at this practice and, you know, I actually am qualified and I have a dispensing license and therefore I am able to actually, you know, locum and dispense in this, you know, GP area or GP office. Or practice because I actually have a dispensing license so that's one thing that's so illegal that a lot of people and a lot of us you will probably have done in our lifetime you know having to look up for a GP who actually has a dispensing license technically you also have to have one yourself because you cannot be dispensing without a license that is illegal you know so so that's another thing to take note of and another thing to be aware of I know sometimes it's like weird because they'll be like because um, especially with, with locums, most of the way in which you receive them is not like on PNET or <laughs> it's not like on a formal network. You don't find out about locums most of the time on, you know, on LinkedIn. Um, most locums, it's like word of mouth. Like if you know someone or know someone who will be like, yeah, yeah, I know this girl, she's free. Or yeah, yeah, I know maybe one person in your hospital will be locuming. And then when they can't go into a locum, then they introduce you. They're like, oh, do you want to do a locum? So that's how most people will get their locums. It's through basically word of mouth. Some people who are professionals will actually, you know, apply for locums. There'll be companies, actually recruitment agencies that will be like wanting to put you on their list, asking your availability, um, and therefore, you know, um, arrange a locum for you like that. So that is another way of you getting a locum. Yeah, well. So the other thing in terms of legalities is the money that you make is that especially when you're doing locums like a lot, a lot, like I'm not talking about one locum a year, you know, but if you're actually having a constant locum, let's say twice a week, you know, um, or like five times a week or something like that, something that's like regular, you know, when you're having locums like that, you have to actually declare it in terms of taxes, you know, you have to actually pay taxes and declare it with taxmen, but eventually you eventually get caught out. I know so many people who've told me stories stories and stories and stories about how taxmen found them or how they were hunted out by taxmen especially when it starts getting into high amounts like in the hundred thousands guys like you will end up having to pay a debt of taxes of over a hundred and something k and um all you could have done was just declared and you would have just submitted and done everything accordingly 
so so that's also something of importance especially with the people who do the more regular incomes and most of the people who do the regular incomes are people who currently maybe might not have a job or might have a lot of free time and therefore do a lot more low comes um, so it is important that should you find yourself in that position you submit taxes do everything say yeah i got this amount of money or i have this you know constant low come especially when it's a constant one you know yeah, yeah i have this constant low come with this gp because very like you're not like an account number you know when they deposit money into your account um they there's you know a whole practice like it's from the practice um thingy account or from life hospital or net care hospitals account if you have done a casualty call so is of like eventually like and it all will pile up so that's why some people will want to work um get cash basis to try to avoid it don't say i told you this don't say i told you this but i know some people in order for them to try to avoid having to pay taxes when they agree to doing low comes they'll say okay cash only and you know they'll want you to they want to be given cash so that there's no paper trail um yeah yeah, I don't know how that's not legal. That's not legal. That's not legal. So now that we're done with um, issues of legality and um, everything else has been sorted and the logistics have been sorted, um, let us move on to the different types of locums and basically the different rates that they mostly pay. So starting with the GP locum, right? So GP GP locums vary. vary. Um, GP locums personally I find disgusting because yo. Like patients in private, especially if you've been working in public all your life, patients in private know their rights. They complain a lot. Um, they want to spend time with you. Like <laughs> they are needy people. <laughs> but I'm also I've also been a, a, a private patient, and personally, I've also been needy. Like sometimes, you know, it, it's like a therapy type session. You know, going to the GP. Like you just want to talk to someone. No, not that you're necessarily sick. So majority of private patients are not sick. Um, some just want sick notes. Like I had this one patient who while doing a one GP locum. That was the, I think that was the only GP, GP locum I've ever done my whole entire existence where they literally were like, I think the person wanted a sick note and they could have just said it. Like, I don't like being lied to. Like, come out straight. Like, I didn't wake up for work and I'm feeling a bit sickly because I had a rough weekend. Um, you know, can I get a sick note, you know? But most of the people, uh, most of the people that, you know, will come to GP offices, they lie, they lie about being sick. One person will say, oh, I have a headache. Oh, and I'm vomiting. And then, my people meningitis, I will raise intracranial pressure. Can't eat, no, son, I'm just had a and literally just want a paper, wants a paper for work. So after you've done the vitals, after you've palpated the abdomen, after you've read your mind, thinking what could this individual possibly have, at the end of the convo, they on some, oh yeah, God, can I have a signal? Then you're like, my man, were you actually really sick to begin with? Really? Or were you just like, lying why are you always lying though like they are like that. that that that's how they that's how they roll you know um gp locums are i i found to be not my favorite so for comserves and things like that they'll say that their rate is like maybe 300 or like 250 which i personally feel is cheating them like 250 an hour 300 an hour i don't think that's right i think it's actually really low especially if you know that you're your GP practice is like ridiculously busy. There's some GP locums that are like disgustingly busy, like to the point where you end up seeing like 60 patients like in five hours. Like your um, like some GP GPs actually are like packed to capacity. So yeah, so they'll normally you know want to give you that money, um, and then for more like medical officers, senior-ish type doctors, it's around 400 an hour to 500 rand an hour, ne? Um, especially when it's a busy locum, maybe they'll push it to like 500 an hour. Yeah, well, so GP locums personally are a lot of hard work. Some GPs don't have nurses to do vitals, so you have to whip out the BP machine, connect, do vitals. Like, it's just like so much effort and so much work. So, GP locums personally, yo, ah, uh, guys, but some people, most people, some people do them. But personally, for me, imagine having to spend a whole day doing a locum, like. What if I just want to spend like three hours? Most of the low comes will be like maybe from nine till five, you know? So it's like long hours. Um, and I don't know, they're not my favorite, but I know people, people will do GP low comes, um, and stand in for GPs, etc. So that is, that is the first, um, that is the first kind of low come that there is. Né? And then the second type of a low come that, that there is, is a theater low come. Now theater low comes are my fave. Um, I prefer theater locums because I feel like personally you make more money working in theater than actually doing a GP locum. So in a GP locum, the most that you can actually make is 500 rand an hour. Whereas with a theater locum, 
um, the most amount of money. Uh, whereas with a theater locum, you can make like a thousand five hundred in twenty minutes, <laughs> like literally, literally a uh, thousand five hundred in twenty minutes. So there's different types of theater locums. You can assist um, gynecologists um, during their operations. Most of their ops are around women nine hundred, you know, eight hundred, you know, lab scopes, things like that. Um, some of the Caesars are around 1.5, sometimes a thousand, depending on how stingy the person is whom you are assisting. So the GP, I mean, so the gynae locum, the gynae locums range, range around then. So if the doctor actually has an, an actual slate, you can actually get good money if they have maybe five cases or six cases. Some people will stay for like more like 10 cases if you have the energy. So most people will do these, um, theater locums maybe when they post call. Um, so yeah, so theater locums, I think. I think they're good. I prefer them. I think you can, personally, I think you make the most amount of money from a theater locum. And with regard to the levels of theater locums, the most amount of money in terms of theater locums that you make is with ortho locum. Ne? Or ortho, as an orthopedic. It's basically as an orthopedic assistant, you know, in theater. So with ortho cases, yes, they generally are very expensive cases. A hip, CEO, femur fracture, like there's so many things that are done and they, the, the, the orthopedic surgeons charge a lot of money for their ops. So generally they'll really be like, they won't cheat you most of the time, they won't cheat their assistants. So their cases can be a bit long, like an hour, two hours, you know? but uh, personally I feel like they pay better money than the gynae, than the gynae ops. So, so you make, you make a good, like, amount of money, like, for knees, like, you have two comma, three comma, you know, to assist an orthopedic surgeon during their operations. So, so, personally, you know, ortho assistant cases are just better, okay? So, um, with regard to surgical assistance, I've never really, no, never, never really, I don't have experience with regard to that. I don't even know people who do that around where I am. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know people who do who do indoor e surgical ops. They should probably be around the same or just slightly more um in elapse, you know, appendectomies and etc. So so yeah, definitely theater locums are more rewarding for the time spent during like your five hours in theater and five hours in a GP office, like the difference in the amount of money that you make is vast. So let us move on to the third type of a locum which is locuming um, in casualty. So locuming in casualty, um, personally I've never done a locum in casualty, but I do know people who do locums in casualty. Most of the locums in casualty will be 12 hour shifts. So maybe from like a seven to seven or eight to eight the next day. And it's basically calls um, that are done by the doctors who are in casualty or stationed in casualty or casualty officer doctors. So most of the time it's the local GPs who will be doing those calls. Né? But sometimes if they're also not available, they'll also ask you to do um, their casualty call. Né? So casualty calls are not hectic at all. They're not like public casualty um, casualties. Like they're not like the ERs in, 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 in public where it's just rough, people are dying, people are coming in and they're sick, people are stabbed. There's like havoc. No, it's, it's actually really chilled. Um, one person told me that the most they'll see like four patients a night, like four patients in 12 hours. But the amount of money that they'll normally pay their casualty doctors doing or standing in for them to do their calls in a private casualty. Um, so will probably be around 2.5. You know? So it's around there, like 2.5 at most 3K. So I don't know, 3K in 12 hours. Uh, you pick your struggle. No, thank you. <laughs> No, thank you. I cannot. 12 hours. But I'm guessing you'll be sleeping, you'll be chilling, whatever. It's not that hectic. But imagine four patients in 12 hours for 3,000 or 2.5. I don't know. I don't know. You pick your struggle. You pick whatever it is that you actually do like. So, so yeah, let us move on to the fourth type of locum that you can do. And that is locuming, well, doing rounds for, for doctors who have patients in the wards. So basically when a doctor will go on holiday and they have patients that are admitted in, um, in the wards, they actually, you know, have to organize someone who's going to round and see their patients. So it's like basically just doing a word round. The question, um, most of the private hospitals are not that big. So I highly doubt that most of the patients will even get to the number of 10. So they will normally also just pay them what they normally pay, like maybe a thousand at most. Sometimes you'll have to discharge um, the patients um, and also write scripts for them. So um, personally, I've never, I've never done a, a round as a locum. Um, but, but I know people have, and I mean, it's nothing. Imagine coming in on a Saturday for like an hour to do a round because a round takes roughly an hour at most. So imagine going in for an hour and getting your, your cash, you know? So, so 
that's also something that I think is not so hectic and labor intensive. So, so that's also another locum to take note of and to consider. So do link down below which locums you like if you're already a medical officer. Also do link down below which ones you'll most likely go for if you are not and you are still studying. Um, and yeah, that is the end of the video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. Um, and also do take note of a lot of things that I mentioned here because they are of utmost importance. Um, you don't want to risk anything that when it comes to things of your license and your finances. So do make sure that you take note of these things. Write them on the knee. Put them at the back of your head whenever you have graduated if you're still a student just remember all these things because they have utmost importance um make sure you do like comment subscribe and i will catch you on my next video thanks for watching this is me signing out bye